February 14, 2024. This is the S&P 500 E Futures Mini on the 2000 tick chart using NinjaTrader 8. Oh, I saw the charts today. It was, I guess you could argue, kind of range bound, but the range is very, very large. And within that range, I saw two legs up, one leg up, consolidation, a second leg, then two legs down, and then two very big legs up. But within each leg and the consolidation areas, there were these big little swings and smaller legs. So I think most of the price action, most of the trades that I could find set up kind of early in the day, right around for the first, I guess, half of the day. And then the second half of the day was a little more sparse. There were some setups I guess you could take, but I felt it was a little bit more risky. On top of that, if you look from where my cursor is all the way, I actually draw it from here to about here. This is about where most of the price action was. And this is about three and a half hours. Then if you look from 10 Pacific Standard to 11, this is one hour of trading. So there is some movement here, but there were no good set entries. And then also from here, 11 to about 12 o'clock Pacific Standard, this is another hour of trading. And there was just these big swings. So I couldn't find any entry. And then if you look back here, this is the last 10 minutes. There's a lot of weird little setups in here, but it's too late in the day to try to take those. So I took a total of two trades, but there were quite a few setups here that I think were possible trades. So I'm going to get into it right now. No economic data came out today that seemed like it would move the markets. In the pre-market, you just kind of have to spike up. I did see this, but you know, I don't trade the pre-market. This is way early in the AM for Pacific Standard Time. It's a new high. It's a first entry long, pullback, second entry long right here. Technically, you have a second entry long here, but I just counted it as one leg down, followed by a push up, and second leg down. So this is actually a decent setup because it's being held, supported by the EMA. It's, there's a break of this green channel, but it moved back in and kind of did test the highs. So whether this is a full break or not, it's kind of up to you how you interpreted it, but I did see it as a break and it moved back in, but it stayed inside long enough that I would consider this as a new break, so a new attempt high. So the first entry long, pull back, second entry long. So it was just something I noticed uh, when I woke up, but I didn't, I wasn't even around to take this. Then prices started consolidating and I drew this as the pre-market high and the pre-market low. So prices started moving. It looks like it's respecting the pre-market high pretty well. I'm thinking at this point, we might be in a trading range. There is a new high, first entry long, second entry long. This is a good signal bar, but it feels a little iffy. This is also the first couple of minutes of the trading day. So it's, I'm really cautious during those times. Price then kind of starts selling off, moving in this yellow channel. I had this as a potential support and this as a potential resistance. So I have this sub trading range, this blue one here. So it's breaking out. I'm curious to see if it's going to move back in or if it was going to go back down and touch the other side of the trading range. But it looked like it was getting close to bounce off of this potential support here. So no setups yet. I see this is another push up. So now clearly I'm thinking, okay, it's moving back into this trading range. I did have at one time think that maybe this is his potential support. So the trading range potentially was a little bit larger from here to here. And maybe there's another sub trading range in here. So here is no, no trades right now. You do have a first entry short, second entry short. This is a break of this up channel and it does, did test the high and this is a pretty strong engulfing bear bar coming down. But this is a this is the signal bar to make you think to go short and it wasn't very convincing. So to put your entry down here is really dicey. But as soon as it comes down and closes and pushes down, you could potentially take a test, but then the EMA is starting to get in get in and play a factor. So I just kind of left it alone. Didn't even mark it. Price then continue moving down. I see the first setup here. It's a first entry long pullback. It creates a second entry long. Now this is what I call an almost setup because this signal bar, it's kind of neutral. It closed at the center and it's an inside bar. It did bounce off the potential bottom of this trading range, which I was thinking might come into play because it had some support here already. And then the subsequent trigger bar is you know confirming your second entry long but the signal bar wasn't that good the trigger bar itself wasn't that good so i kind of decided it wasn't really uh worth it it's an almost setup of course and then it works 
support, but I'm, I wasn't on it, so it's unfortunate. Price is then continue moving. So first entry short, pull back. This creates a second entry short. It's near the high. You could potentially see this is two legs up, potentially a trade here, but I didn't think it was a worthwhile trade. Then I did see, I wanted a, um, so I saw a higher low here. So I saw first entry short, second entry short. The second entry short, I wanted a higher low confirmation to see if prices were truly going to push back up because I did have this green channel, one touch, two touch, three touch, and potentially starting from way down here. But the problem with this channel starting way down here, it didn't really fit nicely up here. This red channel doesn't exist yet. So it was a higher low confirmation bounce off the confirmed blue trend line because it touched four times and I liked it. It was a really strong close. It ticked one of one above, it came back down and it closed, even though it's a bearish candle, it closed bullish enough. So I thought this is a possible trade. So on the next candle I entered, one tick above, or pretty much the high of this guy, I was able to get a quick scalp because there's enough room before it hit the high. <clears throat> and I thought, okay, well, even though there's a measured move up, this looks like it's kind of being dominated by this push up. It seems like it wants to come up, come back up and test the highs of this trading range. So then prices then kind of chop sideways. It gets a little messy in here. And <clears throat> I'll admit, after a while, I kind of just to make things clear, I got rid of this just to make things a little more clear. I saw a new low here. It's the first entry short, pull back, second entry short, confirm second entry short. It looks like it's starting in its own little sub trading range, but I wasn't too sure because this isn't a good signal bar to go short on. Here, it bounces off the bottom of this trading range. So it looks like it's one touch, two touch, three touch. Well, you could say it's a fourth touch, but I count it as a third touch because this is pretty close together. I was thinking maybe this red channel up could have been a factor because it does confirm a third time. So even though it confirmed a third time, I felt like it wasn't good enough. There is enough room to the high and it could be a failure. So when it failed here and it confirmed, now the trade felt like it's too late because it's already tried to push up to the other side. So definitely uh, add this formed and this candle closed a little bit lower than it would have been a worthwhile trade. But once it closed and made this really big spike up, I felt the trade had already gone without me. Starts moving up and out moves up this green channel, it breaks out the green channel, makes a new high. So at this point, when I drew this red trend line, I abandoned the idea of this blue one being a factor now because it looked like this red one could potentially be fitting both at the highs and the lows. Previously, the blue one, I tried to make the other side fit well, but it didn't look right, especially after this breakout. That creates a first entry long. Here creates a second entry long. So it's new high, first entry long, pull back, second entry long, two legs down. It did already break out of this green channel. And I thought this was a possible trade, not to go long, but to go short, because this technically hasn't failed the second entry long yet. But the next candle, if it breaks below this double bottom, then it would be a failure. <clears throat> and I thought after the break of the green channel, it already made a new high. So the uptrend has played out. It's rejecting off the top of this potential red channel. And even though it bounced off the EMA, it closed below. So ideally, this would have closed a little bit lower, but I was thinking there might be a trade here. And if you did take this trade, you would have been uh, you would have been filled. There's enough room before you get to the bottom. But I didn't like this trade. I was looking for a little bit more of a cleaner setup. But I did see this as a potential trap for a first entry long, second entry long, because here. If you're bullish, you would think, well, this is a very strong signal bar. It would have picked you up and then potentially stopped you out. And here probably definitely would have stopped you out. So there's a trap here because I didn't take this trade thinking going long because I just didn't trust after it hit the other side, it wants to push potentially back down to this side. So it was just kind of a little bit jarbled, a little confusing. Now it creates a lower high. I thought this is a possible trade. It confirms the failed second entry long. The bar completely engulfed this previous bar and it closed very bearish. So this is a very strong indication that prices are pushing back down. It closed below the EMA, which I like. It's about to break through this red channel and potentially move back into range. So I think it's a little more aggressive, but it is a possible trade. 
here you would have entered and likely gotten filled and then probably gotten a quick scalp out of this. It looks like it's moving down this green channel and I had this yellow one here, but I wasn't too sure which one was gonna dominate. Here, it looks like the yellow one is in charge. This green one isn't as important now. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it because at the time I thought it was. And prices continue moving. It's a new low, double bottom, first entry short. I counted this as a double bottom, but at the time I was thinking as a first entry short, pullback, second entry short. Once I saw this, I was debating whether it's a first entry short or a second entry short. Technically on the count, it resets, so it is a first entry short. But if you count it as a second entry short, I think there was a possible trade here because of rejection by the EMA. Rejection off the top of this yellow down channel, which has been confirmed now. <clears throat> and it's after the break of this green channel that I previously had. Something like this. It's one attempt down. Pull back. This could be the second attempt down to test this low. And it looks like it would have worked. And prices continue moving down. It falls into what I think is another green channel here, but it also this yellow channel. So here, it's a break and overshoot of this yellow channel, but it fits nicely within this green down channel. Comes down, now breaking out of this green down channel. So I'm a little confused now because what's happening is there's an overshoot of this yellow channel and there is an overshoot of this green channel. But here you're thinking the green channel wants to test its low. The yellow channel is already broken out. So you're thinking it might make a corresponding move to this side, but I'm not 100% sure. So you have a new low, it's the first entry short. Here you create a second entry short failure. So this is where it gets a little confusing because the break of the green channel, it wants to come back down and test. So this is one attempt down. This could be the start of the second attempt down. So this one, this green channel might dominate. The yellow channel already broke a low. So you're thinking it's going to overshoot to this side. I also drew this orange channel here and it is confirming and touching. So do I go long considering it's a second entry short failure potentially, or do I go short thinking it's a continuation down on the short side? So it's a little confusing. It's a little unclear. So I thought, since I don't know which channel is dominating, is the, uh, break of this one going to push to this side or is it going to continue to test the lows of this green one now this yet orange one's also in play there's too many factors it's unclear so i decided to skip it it pushes up so now you do have a confirmed failed second to short it's a really good strong green bar i wanted a confirmation and i finally get my confirmation higher low so i'm thinking okay so what's happened is the confirm failed second entry short the ema is holding <clears throat> this downtrend of this green has played out because it went broke above it made one attempt down made a second attempt down even if you count it bigger first attempt down because this wasn't really a clean uh close inside or outside so i said first entry short on a bigger visual first attempt down second attempt down looks like it's about to fail here it it ticked one tick above came back and that's where i entered it closed a little bit low. I was a little concerned, but the one thing I liked about this trade is the risk was really small. This is only a five tick candle. And I was looking for at least just a quick scalp to push up. It is holding on this orange channel. So I thought it was definitely a smaller risk just because the candle is so small. Was able to get a quick scalp and it continues moving. If you try to hang in there for more than two points, you might've gotten stopped out. It looks like it's consolidating in this blue channel. It's a new high, it's a first entry long pullback, second entry long, it's also a triple test. And I thought this is actually another possible trade. It is a little bit of a bigger risk because the candle size is bigger. It's about over, over three points. <clears throat> but it was the break of this orange channel. It made one push up. This could be the start of, start of a second push up to touch this side. Plus the triple test here, I'm thinking it might be in a range. So there's enough room to the other side. And I'm not too worried about the down, downtrend anymore because this orange downtrend had overshoot, made one attempt down here. In a second attempt down, clearly it's played out. The green channel isn't even in play now because there's attempts to try to go down and clearly we're not even trying to reach the low here. It's just kind of oscillating sideways. So I thought this is a potential trade. Looks like if you did enter here, you would have gotten a good scalp out of it. Prices then move. It moves out of this trading range and it looks like it falls into another trading range. I was tempted to drag this up higher, but it just looked like it felt cleaner down here. And I saw a triple test here, but there's no trade because even though it's a triple test, the entire candle already spanned 
and move to the other side. So it could be range bound. This could be a fail breakout, but this fail breakout, I, it, it'll be just that. It could be a breakout that fails and moves right back in. So I had to leave it alone. And I felt like if you try to sell here, you're selling at the lows, but you definitely don't really want to buy yet because this candle is just so bearish. You want to see what the next candle does. When this next candle forms and closes, then you definitely don't think about going long anymore. Maybe you want to chase the go short, but it had to, it happened rather quickly. So if you didn't have your uh, idea of the trade to just go short, you would have missed this trade. Kind of falls back into the lower trading range, which oscillates, and it kind of moves back down on this green channel. I don't see anything particularly that I like. It starts moving back up on this yellow channel going up. There's no clean setup. I see a new low here. It's a first entry short, second entry short. This is your signal bar to go short. It's not, doesn't convince you to go short. And it kind of moves up. It kind of chops again. I don't have this yellow up channel drawn yet. I did have this green one here, but it didn't fit nicely. It only kind of confirmed maybe two times, two, three times here, but it didn't fit nicely at the top. So there wasn't anything, uh, it didn't, Convince me of taking any trades here or see, looking for a setup. Creates a first entry long, second entry long here. Technically, your signal bar for second entry long is here, but I don't have this confirmed yet. This uh, yellow up channel, and this is an inside bar. Granted, it is a smaller risk, but it just had this very, very strong bullish push down, especially this gigantic red candle. That seeing this and then seeing this, it's a little indecisive. Definitely could push again further down. So thinking of a bounce and going long was not on my radar. Technically, you have a higher low here, but it wasn't a very clean higher low, no trade. You do have a first entry short, second entry short. You don't have a second entry short failure till you get to about here. <clears throat> and this is an inside bar. So nothing is here is telling me to get ready to go long, even though here I did have my trend line established now. And the yellow trend line up here, the other part of the channel does meet and fit nicely, but it's just a little bit noisy here. On top of that, price action is slowing down. So the candles are taking a little bit longer to close. It pushes up, doesn't quite hit the other side. It's the first break of this green channel. It's the first entry long, and that's all you get. Because you do have a second entry long here, but this isn't a very good signal bar. If this had closed green, then I would have counted it as a potential bounce off of this bottom. So even though I'll mark it as a second entry long, but it's like a more of an almost setup. So let's see, I'll just quickly label it second entry long but it's more of an almost setup it looked like it would have been enough for a quick scalp <clears throat> but it felt a little bit dicey because it also kind of formed and completed below the ema prices then shoot down it falls into this green down channel <clears throat> i don't see anything particularly uh convincing and then right here it just gets really really congested because these are just these aren't doji candles, but they're very neutral with long tails on each side. It's indecision. Prices then continue moving up. Here you just get a bunch of first entries that I don't really like. Mm. Technically, you have a second entry long here, but this isn't a good signal bar to go long on. You could argue that you could group this as first entry long, pull back. Then this could be the second entry long, supposedly. But it'd be like the first attempt. Well, after this break, you're, this is actually the first attempt up. You have a potential second attempt. So this potentially could be your second entry long right here. If you kind of group this together as one visual laid down, first push up, pull back, second push up, but just didn't look clean enough for me. Price then continue moving. It falls into this green channel. It's a new low. It's first entry short, second entry short. This is a potential second entry short, but now the market is kind of pushing up now. So I was reluctant to see a second entry short potential trade here because it is potentially hitting the top of this pre-market high, but it's more of an inside bar. You have the EMA, which is acting as support now, potentially coming into play. So it would be, I feel, a riskier trade. Turns out it would have worked though. You could say this is a second entry short failure. Actually, I will mark this. I didn't see this previously. Failed second entry short. So this is a potential trade. Because you had a second entry short, it fails right here. EMA is starting to come into play. So there is potential trade here. I didn't mark this earlier. I should have seen it. Prices then continue moving up. It gets a little bit choppy and noisy. I don't like particularly anything that I see here. It's a first entry long here. It comes back and touches the top. 
And then it just kind of quickly moves into the close. And this is all just very, very tight trading that isn't worth trading, especially if there's only 10 minutes left in the day. And it just kind of moves into the close. So overall today, there were a lot more setups than typical, but it mostly happened at the beginning. <clears throat> Price action itself was very, very choppy. The second half of the day didn't offer as many setups that I felt were clean. But overall, there was enough here, I think, that you could have probably gotten one or two decent trades, especially these ones that I put in asterisks. So hopefully that was helpful.